सहनावतु सहनो भुनक्त सह वीरकवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तुम विद्वेश ृहादिषु निमचि 
ಇಷ್ಟಾನಿಷ್ಟೋಪತ್ತಿಷು ಮೈ ಚಾನನ್ಯೋಗೇನ ಭಕ್ತಿರವ್ಯಭಿಚಾರಿಣಿ ವಿವಿಕ್ತೇಶರತಿರ್ಜನ ಸಂಸದಿ ಅಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನಿತ್ಯಜ್ಞಾನಾರ್ಥದರ್ಶನ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಯು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಡೇಸ್ ಅಮಾನಿತ್ವ ಎಬ್ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಾನಿತ್ವ ಎಬ್ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಾಯ್ಡ್ ಅಮಾನಿತ್ವ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮಿಲಿಟಿ ಅದಂಬಿತ್ವ ಎಬ್ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಿಪೋಕ್ರೆಸಿ ಎಬ್ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಿಟೆನ್ಸಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಪ್ರಿಟೆಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಎಬ್ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರಿಟೆನ್ಸಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಅಹಿಂಸಾ ನಾನ್ ವಯಲೆನ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹರ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಬೈ ಅವರ್ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ ಬೈ ಅವರ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಅವರ್ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ಶಾಂತಿ ಫರ್ಗಿವೆನೆಸ್ or a glad acceptance and accommodation of the shortcomings limitations or defects of the person with whom i am related arjavam <clears throat> straight forwardness honesty truthfulness truthfulness not only in words of course it should be there that i should have a commitment to speak truth if i choose to speak then a commitment to speak truth but the truth also should as best as possible be spoken in as ple- as, as pleasantly as possible satyam bruyat priyam bruyat arjavam <clears throat> ಆಚಾರ್ಯೋಪಾಸನ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಉಪಾಸನ ಉಪಾಸನ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಆರ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಟು ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಟು ಒನ್ಸ್ ಗುರು ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಟು ದ ಟೀಚರ್ ದಟ್ ಶೋಸ್ ದ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಶಿಪ್ ದಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ and the student in the vedic culture a student had a great reverence for the teacher teacher was like a role model even in the school setting we always had great reverence for the teachers in those days teachers were simply teachers meaning they were nothing else they were full time teachers today even in india also teaching has become a profession and therefore making money has become a priority there but those days teaching then what to talk of a teacher of of self knowledge brahma vidya thus the worship of the teacher or the devotion for the teacher is considered to be an important requirement for the knowledge to take place Upanishad says that one should have as much devotion and reverence for the teacher as one has for Ishwara. When that devotion is there, that reverence is there, the shraddha or the faith or the trust is there, then the student has the right disposition of mind, right frame of mind in which the knowledge can take place. when would knowledge take place when these words of the scriptures reveal their meaning words do not just remain words but then they remain 
they reveal their meaning. I understand what the meaning or the purport of the words is. So words have to reveal themselves to me. Then only the knowledge takes place. Even here also, as I am talking, communicating with you, these words should be understood in the mind. Then alone, the communication takes place. Similarly also, the words of the scriptures should reveal their meanings. Then alone, the knowledge can take place. <clears throat> and for that, the disposition of mind that is required is of the nature of devotion, bhakti, shraddha, the trust, the faith and reverence in the teacher. <clears throat> And this we can acquire by service to the teacher. So service to the teacher becomes a means of discovering the devotion to the teacher. You come in contact with the teacher, observe the teacher, see what the teacher stands for, what the teacher is, how that very knowledge translates itself into the life of the teacher. And you see this, See the glory, glory is the greatest of the teacher, then that reverence, that devotion also is invoked in your heart. <clears throat> and Lord Krishna says that you should win over the teacher. That with the pranipatena pariprasnena sevaya. By seva, by worship, by service to the teacher, may you win their hearts. May you make them favorable to you because the grace of the teacher is extremely important also in gaining the knowledge. We require different kinds of grace. Ishwar Krupa, Guru Krupa, Shastra Krupa, Atma Krupa. Krupa means grace. Ishwar Krupa, the grace of Ishwar. Of course, that's the first requirement. By the grace of Ishwara, we get the Guru. So then, Guru Krupa, the grace of the teacher. By the grace of the teacher, we get the scriptures. Shastra Krupa, the Krupa, the favorableness or grace of the scriptures we gain by the grace of the teacher. And with that, Atma Krupa, the grace of one's own self. All of these, the whole thing depends upon Krupa. Krupa means the grace. So we want grace of the Ishvara. We want the grace of the teacher. We want the grace of the scriptures. We want the grace of the self. <clears throat> In all of that, the service to the teacher becomes a very important means of pleasing the teacher, getting his favorableness, getting his grace. Swami, a teacher is supposed to be a wise person. What do you mean pleasing that? He is always pleased. Why you to please him? Always pleased. His blessing is always available. But we want a special kind of blessing. A special kind of blessing is that he favors us by imparting this teaching. So that is important. The Mahatmas, wise people are always, they always love you and they always, you know, bless you. But we need a special kind of blessing. And that is in the form of imparting this knowledge. And therefore, we please them means that we have to not prove, but we have to demonstrate our fitness, our devotion, commitment to knowledge. That here is a person whose primary interest is in knowledge. Because people go to these saints for many reasons. They want their grace for many personal reasons of the place. Swami, so bless my son, so he gets admission. Do this, so he gets job. Do this. So, so many personal things also we want, which also is okay. 
इनफैक्ट मुंडे को ऑपरेशन से तस्मात आत्मज्ञम खैर से भूति काम है नेफर द वन हु इस डिजायरस ऑफ प्रोस्पेरिटी में ही सर ए वाइस पर्सन बट वी वुड वांट टू सर द वाइस पर्सन नॉट फॉर दिस मटेरियल प्रोस्पेरिटी वी वुड सर्व हिम फॉर अवर स्पिरिचुअल प्रोस्पेरिटी so when the teacher recognizes us he is a sincere student who does not know anything but the knowledge then he becomes mightily pleased always pleased as we said this story earlier also that sage jagnavalkya once called his wife and said hey maitri i am now leaving home i am going to be renunciate a wandering monk But don't worry, I made enough provision for you when I go away. Nothing to worry about. So then, Maitri asks a, a very unusual question. Says, "Sir, if I got the wealth of the entire earth, not only the wealth that you're leaving me, but if I got the wealth of the entire earth." Can I get immortality? Call it immortality. Call it moksha. Can I get immortality? Yagnan says, "No, my dear. What you can get with wealth is comfort. You can live the life that a comfortable person lives. Lives, but immortality cannot be gained by wealth." Wealth, name, fame, anything material. Amrita tvasya na asasti vidya na idhi. Vidya na wealth, asasti. There is no hope or expectation of amrita tvam of immortality. Then Maitri says, "And what do I have to do with this wealth? That which cannot give me immortality. What need do I have of that wealth?" Please give me that by which I can get immortality. Yagnya Loka was just mightily pleased. Say, Maitri, you always been dear to me, but today you are especially dear because I see in you a seeker, one who desires, who has no agenda other than moksha or immortality. I am mighty, mighty pleased. So the Vishesh Kurpa. That teachers are always pleased with us, but when a teacher discovers that here is a person who wants knowledge, then Vishesh Kurpa, a special grace is there. That is what is meant by winning over the teacher, <coughs> and that is the intention or the purpose of Acharya Upasanam, service of the teacher is to. Acquire their grace, their favorableness. <coughs> Continuing, we are in the first verse still. Acharya Upasanam Shaucham. See the translation: shaujam, cleanliness. <laughs> That's an interesting value. Cleanliness. What does it have to do with spirituality? So these are the values that are taught to us for our spiritual growth. What does cleanliness have to do? So Shankaracharya explains that cleanliness is of two levels: bahyam shaujam, antaram shaujam. external cleanliness and internal cleanliness external cleanliness also is important as our swami says you you are an organized person when things are clean your clothes are clean your body is clean and your place is also well organized that shows an organized mind so that also is important 
But more important, and more important is internal clean. The cleanliness of the mind is very important. So, what do you mean by cleanliness of the mind? What is meant by uncleanliness of the mind? What is meant by impurity of the mind? These negative tendencies or impulses, such as jealousy, such as frustration, such as anxiety, such as fear, such as hatred, such as aversion, such as even self-condemnation, all of these are the impurities of the mind. Why are they called impurities? Because whenever any of these thoughts arises in our mind, such as jealousy, we become uncomfortable. The mind becomes restless, it loses its peace. We cannot be at peace with ourselves when there is jealousy in the mind, when there is anxiety in the mind, when there is hatred in the mind, when there is self-condemnation in the mind. Therefore, these negative tendencies are called the impurities of the mind. And here Lord Krishna says, Shaucham. There must be a value for the cleanliness of the mind. Meaning that you should be constantly striving to keep your mind clean. Ram Krishna Paramahamsa used to say that just as a copper vessel has to be cleaned every day, a copper vessel can be clean, made shining by turmeric and salt, a combination of that, a mixture of that. If you apply on the surface of a copper vessel, it becomes shining like gold. But during the day, unfortunately, on account of contact with the air, there is oxidation. And again, you find spots. Next day, you must again do that. Every day you should do that. To keep that copper vessel clean, every day we must clean it with this uh, turmeric. Similarly, mind also is like that copper vessel. We should clean it every day, not every day, every moment. Because just as a copper vessel is, is its nature. To, to interact with the oxygen in the atmosphere and that is how it, there are stains. Similarly, when the mind comes in contact with the world, with the people, with situations, with events, it is very likely to pick up some impurity. When we interact with the people, a little bit, a little bit jealousy when he says, you know something, I got this promotion, I got this, I got that, a little jealousy arises in my mind. Some, or somebody says something which is, which I do not like, a hurt arises in the mind, a hurt, a guilt, a jealousy, a little anger, a little resentment. So these little, little feelings arise, may not appear very significant, but they arise anyway. In most cases, our transactions are not complete, they leave a residue behind. So when I talk to you, that interaction leaves a residue. What residue? Little displeasure, little jealousy little hurt, little anxiety, little fear, little attachment, little aversion. So this most intersection interactions leave this kind of residue and they all pile up. Like the stains on our clothes, how they pile up. If you do not clean them right away, it becomes more and more difficult than to clean them. 
Similarly, if you do not clean these parts of impurity from our mind, then they will become more difficult to clean. Therefore, just as moment a, a, a tea drop falls on your shirt, right away you take a little detergent and wash it away. Similarly, when you find a stain of impurity settling in the mind, mind is like that, like that, like the cloth, like a fabric. We should arrive and clean it with a detergent. <coughs> so, what's a detergent? What's a detergent with which you clean the mind, the fabric of the mind? We already mentioned this earlier. The detergent is called Pratipaksha Bhavana. Bhavana, attitude. Pratipaksha. Prati means opposite. Paksha means position. The attitude of taking the opposite position is called Pratipaksha Bhavana. Meaning that whenever any feeling arises in our mind, it is because we view a thing or a person in a certain way. Sometimes I view a person in one way and a feeling of friendliness arises in me. I mean, view another person in another way and a feeling of enmity may arise in me. So feeling that arise like anger arises because of the way I perceive that person. Jealousy because I perceive that person. So what is necessary is that I deliberately perceive that person in an opposite way. For example, somebody has hurt my feeling and anger arises at that person. Now I should have a value of cleaning my mind of the impurity of anger. Because it's an impurity and it damages me. Thus, I should have a value for becoming free from anger. So, as soon as anger arises in my mind, I should be ready to wipe it, out, wipe it off. Anger is because I cannot tolerate this person. Anger arises because of intolerance. I cannot tolerate somebody's behavior. I cannot tolerate the person for a variety of reasons. How does he look? How does he talk? How does he behave? I have my own expectation of how the world other people should be. And when they cannot fulfill that expectation, I get upset. I get angry. So, the anger is because of intolerance. What is the Pratipaksha Bhavana? What is the opposite attitude? Tolerance, accommodation. We talked about it yesterday. Shantihi. Shanti means forgiveness, accommodation. Look at the person behind the behavior. The behavior may be hurtful, but the person behind the behavior he is a person who is himself or herself hurt in pain. When I make my mind see that, then that anger diffuses. <clears throat> Jealousy. When I hear somebody about somebody or discover that somebody has progressed more than I have, somebody has something, see, whatever I value, I find that somebody is more than what I have. I value my career and I discover that somebody has advanced much more in the career than I have. I value salary. I discover that somebody is getting much more salary than I do. I value education, learning, scholarship. I discover that somebody is in fact much more scholarly than I am. 
I value my appearance. I discover that somebody is much more good looking than I am. So whatever thing that I value, I don't care for everything, you know, I mean that everybody is not jealous of every, uh, because of everything, everybody has value for certain things. You may not value what I value. I may value, as I say, knowledge, you may not care for it, you may care for something else. But whatever we care for, whatever we value, when we find that, because that is how I judge myself. I seek comfort from my belief that I am a learned person. When I discover that somebody is more learned than me, then I can no more discover, I no more find comfort if from my learning. I become insecure, I become inadequate and immediately a sense of inadequacy arises in me. Interesting to understand why jealousy arises. I become jealous of that person, but the cause of jealousy is within me. I basically have a problem with me. That I want to feel good about myself, that I am something, I am alright. And so far, I was deriving comfort from my belief that I am, I am a learned person. When I discover that you are more learned than I am, I am a PhD, I discover you are three PhDs. You know what it does to me? That I am not as good as you. I am not good enough. I am inadequate. Therefore, your accomplishment creates in me a sense of inadequacy about myself. Understand that. And that is what is painful. You become instrumental in creating me a sense of inadequacy with which I am not comfortable and therefore I become that expresses as jealousy towards you. <clears throat> so jealousy when somebody is more accomplished than I am. What do we do? How do we diffuse that? by congratulating that person, sharing in the happiness of that person. How would I feel if I was in the position of that person? Try to feel that, try to identify with that person. Share in the happiness of that person. Congratulate that person. And tell yourself, well, if there is something to learn from that person, do that. And at the same time, congratulate the person. Share in the happiness of that person. See, we are not jealous of everybody. If my son is more learned than me, I don't feel jealous, do I? No. If my son gets more salary than I get, or at a given age, my son has made much more progress than I did. You know the standard joke when a father tells his son, says, My son, when I was of your age, I was a PhD. Son says, Dad, when George Washington was your age, he was President of the United States. <laughs> anyway, the thing is that. I do not feel jealous of my son if he makes more progress than I did. Is it not so? I think so. We are not jealous of our son. We are not jealous of people whom we like. Our friends, we are not jealous. We are happy. When my son progresses, I am happy. My friend goes ahead, I am happy. Is it not so? It is not that I feel jealous of everybody who goes ahead of me. So when I feel jealous, just establish that relation. If is my friend. Therefore, if my friend does well, I'm happy. I share in his happiness. Similarly, establish mentally a friendship with that person and share in the happiness. Congratulate that person. 
share in the happiness, then this feeling of jealousy will go away. There are just a few examples. But what it means is that we should understand the workings of our mind. In fact, Bhagavad Gita is an excellent text which teaches us the workings of our mind. Now, the first day we say that it is meant for normal people or abnormal, normally abnormal people like us. So it is important to understand why any given feeling arises. Understand the mechanism or the, you know, me how the mechanism. How, why jealousy arises? Why anger arises? Why frustration arises? Why do I condemn somebody? Why do I condemn myself? Why do I feel guilty? Why am I hurt? We should understand this. Then we will know the mechanism. And then we will know how to take the opposite position. Like self-condemnation also is a very big impurity. We are the worst critics of ourselves. It is the nature of our intellect to judge whatever it is it comes in contact with. It is the nature of our intellect to judge. In Vedanta, intellect or buddhi is defined as that state of mind which determines adhyavasayatmika antahakana vritti buddhi meaning that state of mind which judges, determines, decides. So we always judge whatever we come in contact with. But the first thing I come in contact with is my own self because I am a self-conscious being. And therefore, I always carry a self-judgment, a judgment about myself. And usually, that judgment is not very, is not worth announcing. Meaning that, I do not have a very great opinion about myself, usually. And particularly, whenever I am not able to live up to my own expectation of myself. At that time, I really feel very displeased with myself. I expect that I should win this game. I could not win. I am frustrated. I should score the first rank. I could not score. I should have this score in SAD. I did not have. I should get admission in this university. I could not. Meaning, whenever I am not able to live up to my own expectation of myself, I become dissatisfied with myself. I should be an honest person, I could not be. I should be truthful, but I was not able to. I should not hurt somebody, but I said something by which somebody was hurt. So, lots of expectations we have ourselves. And when we find that we are not able to live up to our own expectation, we become unhappy with our own self. And different people have different tendencies. But some, everybody has a tendency to be, to be critical of oneself. But some people are more than others. Some will are more critical of themselves than others. Some will keep on blaming themselves. There are some who blame others for something that, for whatever happened. Some others, they keep on blaming themselves for whatever happened. If a tree falls there, I think I did something. So this tendency of blaming oneself, judging oneself inadequate, this is what creates a displeasure, dissatisfaction with oneself. And then it can build up with self-dissatisfaction, self-condemnation. All sadness and all depression arises from self-condemnation. 
all unhappiness is the result of self dissatisfaction what is happiness self satisfaction means happiness what is unhappiness self dissatisfaction means unhappiness so we should be watchful of this tendency to judge myself judging will be there but to brand myself as inadequate as no good as unsuccessful as failure because that causes self rejection and sometimes self condemnation there is also a great impurity so shaucham purity to the mind requires that i should clean up my mind of that tendency of self rejection self dissatisfaction builds up to self rejection builds up to self condemnation see under the anatomy of every every feeling we should understand the anatomy of the feeling so like, what should i do self acceptance if self rejection causes this then self acceptance is the pratipaksha bhav accepting myself just as i am told that i should gracefully accept the other person accommodate them their limitations and shortcomings similarly i should also gracefully accept my limitation and shortcomings i should remind myself that whoever is born is born imperfect nobody is perfect and i am also not perfect i have god has given me some powers in terms of power to know power to will power to create power to act but all these powers are limited and therefore in whatever i do this limitation is going to reflect i cannot expect myself to be successful all the time i cannot expect myself to be better than others all the time i should be kind to myself and therefore accommodate myself so self acceptance is very very important thing no swami if i keep accepting myself then i will know this another problem then how will i progress people think that progress can take place only there is dissatisfaction other progress cannot take place that's not that's not right progress will take place not because of dissatisfaction progress will take place because i value your progress if i if i find some limitation in me which i think i should get over well i'm committed to do that accepting myself does not mean that i do not make an attempt to improve or correct myself that's not the point but just because i do not possess certain requisite qualities that is not the reason for me to reject myself accept myself as i am with my limitations with a commitment and wherever the limit i can overcome the limitations i will do that for that this satisfaction or self condemnation is not necessary what is necessary is a value for self growth <clears throat> so this is a big human problem animals don't have this problem they don't compare themselves with each other you know i am comparing with others and judging ourselves based on somebody else's standard and the swami says a cow has no problem a cow with shapely horns and a cow with crooked horns a cow with crooked horns doesn't feel that it is inferior to another cow with shapely horns doesn't feel a cow that gives 10 liter milk one cow gives 1 liter milk this fellow doesn't feel that i am inferior to that cow <coughs> there is no success no failure no inferiority no superior nothing i mean that doesn't mean you have to become animals this is just a comparison they have those things because they are not evolved enough to have that 
then we compare and we have complex it shows that we are evolved but then evolution places a great burden upon us as to become free from those complexes <clears throat> saucham and so internal impure impurity of the mind and our scriptures say that so ahara sutto ahara shuddho sattva shuddhi chandu ke upanishad is ahara shuddho sattva shuddhi when your ahara when your food is pure your mind also will be pure therefore your food also is considered a very important contributor not the only contributor but an important contributor to the state of mind Bhagavad Gita, in the seventeenth chapter, describes food. It classifies food as sattvic food, rajas food, tamas food. Meaning, there are certain food when you eat, it makes your mind calm and tranquil. There are certain foods when you eat, makes your mind agitated. Certain foods that you eat makes your mind dull. So avoid those things which make the mind dull. Avoid those things which make the mind agitated, and preferentially eat those things which are conducive for the calmness and tranquility of the mind. Shaucham. <coughs> Next one is stairiam, steadfastness. Stair, stirta. Stira means. standing steadfast stairam steadfastness a commitment to one's pursuit a commitment to achieving one's goal meaning a commitment to make whatever efforts are necessary for achieving one's goal In this context, our goal is knowledge. For that, no doubt, study of scriptures, etc., means. But at the same time, purity of the mind also is a great is a means. Therefore, steadfastness in pursuit of knowledge will involve a commitment to shravanam, listening to scriptures. studying the scriptures at the feet of a teacher or listening to cds or whatever dvds whatever but listening mananam you reflect and upon whatever you will learn by shravanam by listening this is dhyasana in a simulation of what you have understood a commitment to this process of learning and the reason why steadfastness is prescribed as a value is because obstacles always come in our life shriyam se bahu vignani they say that whenever you are you undertake any auspicious task there are going to be obstacles in fact brahmadarni gopanisha says ye devatas you know gods they do not like somebody when that person pursues brahma vidya the knowledge of brahman self they don't like it why they don't like it because when you pursue this knowledge in a way you become a renunciate if you whether you take the life of renunciation or in the mind you have slowly and slowly become disinterested in all the worldly affairs so formerly a person was every day performing his worship and making offerings to this devadas now the fellow has taken renunciation for pursuing knowledge so devadas or gods are no more getting their tax or their cut their share i should say they don't like it and there were they place obstacles on the path of the person who is pursuing knowledge So when obstacles come. Understand that God is taking note of you. Don't worry. 
Meaning obstacles should not discourage us. Obstacles should in fact make us stronger to overcome those obstacles. Ishwara wants to test our sincerity. There is a story of Lord Shiva told in the Mahimna Stodra in the Shiva Purana. The Lord Shiva is a great devotee of Lord Vishnu. I mean Lord Vishnu is a great devotee of Lord Shiva. If you read Shiva Purana, then Vishnu is the devotee of Shiva. If you read Vishnu Purana, Shiva is the devotee of Vishnu. Which is a nice thing. So in Shiva Purana, Lord Vishnu is described as a great devotee of Lord Shiva. Every day he would perform worship of Lord Shiva. And offer 1000 lotuses every day. So one part of this puja or worship is what is called archana, offering flowers at the feet of the Lord. You utter one name and offer a flower. Om Achyutaya Namaha, Om Anantaya Namaha, Om Govindaya Namaha. So like this, Lord Vishnu used to perform elaborate worship and offer 1000 lotuses at the feet of Lord Shiva. So one day Lord Shiva said, let us see, let us test his sincerity. So one day when Lord Vishnu is thus performing Archana, he found that there was shortage of one lotus. One lotus was removed, taken away from there and 999 lotus are offered. One lotus is missing. There is a shortage of one lotus. Not missing, shortage of one lotus. Now what do you do? What do we say? We will say that Akshatan, Samarpayami, Pushpartham, instead of lotus I am offering this, uh, this rice and we do this thing. But that is not the real way. When you are performing, you should not even get up from there. There should be no other activity. When you now vow to do the sankalpa, then you must finish it. So now what should Lord Vishnu do? There is no lotus. Then Lord Vishnu realized that they call me Pundarika Akshan. One having the eyes, lotus-like eyes. Meaning my eyes are compared to lotus. So what he did, he pulled out his right eye, offered it a thousand lotus. Mightily pleased Lord Shiva appears before him. And Gato Bhakti Udreka Parindamaso Chakrababusha Trayanam Rakshai Tripurahar Jagarati Jagatam says Mahim Sotra that this extreme devotion got transformed as we discuss as a chakra. So Lord Shiva gave to Lord Vishnu that chakra or discuss with which he protects all the three worlds. Meaning that sometimes obstacles are placed to test us, to test our resolve. So stadium, a resolve, a steadfastness of not giving up what I have undertaken on account of the obstacles that come. Meaning, one's commitment to overcome the obstacles and not give in to the obstacles. Obstacles will come. I'm ready to go to the class and then the guest comes. This is a very common thing. It is in India because they just drop in. Here, of course, people come with an appointment, but they just drop in. So what do you do? Some I could not come to class because the guests came at that time and only this happened. So many obstacles happen. Formerly you were inviting guests when you are not coming to the class. Now that very thing becomes an obstacle. Formerly what you had wanted yourself becomes an obstacle. So obstacles will come and we have to know that what I have undertaken is a very important thing. And therefore, I should not submit myself to the obstacles as best as I can. Stadium. <clears throat> obstacles can be Adhyatmika from one's own self, Adhyodhika from the environment, 
ఆ దైవిక ఫ్రమ్ ద దేవతాస్ ఐ టోల్డ్ అబౌట్ ఆఫ్టేకల్ టు దేవతాస్ ది ది వరల్డ్ అరౌండ్ మీ ఇన్ ద ఎలిమెంటల్ వరల్డ్ ఆల్సో కెన్ క్రియేట్ ఆఫ్టేకల్స్ అండ్ మై ఓన్ బాడీ మై ఓన్ మైండ్ ఆల్సో కెన్ క్రియేట్ ఆఫ్టేకల్స్ సో బాడీ షుడ్ బి క్యాప్ట్ ఇన్ గుడ్ కండిషన్ ద మైండ్ షుడ్ బి క్యాప్ట్ ఇన్ గుడ్ కండిషన్ so that they cooperate with me understand that in this pursuit as in any other pursuit and particularly in this pursuit we require cooperation of our own self cooperation of our body cooperation of our sense organs cooperation of our mind because they can become our greatest obstacles the mind may not cooperate with me big obstacle the body does not cooperate with me obstacle so adhyatmika obstacles coming from one's own self never keeping the body mind etc in good condition so that they cooperate with me all of this becomes important but hami what do you do about the all planets and stuff like that prayer when we cannot control something then we do pray therefore prayer seeking the grace of ishvara that also becomes a very important part of our daily routine seeking grace not for any personal favor but please remove the obstacles please give me the fitness please give me the qualifications the requisite preparedness please give me the resolve please remove the obstacles from my path when can perform the prayer so there also becomes an important element in our spiritual pursuit so acharya upasanam shaucham sthayam atma vinigraha self control vinigraha nigraha means curbing atma means the self here self means the mind and the sense organs many self control control over one's own self mastery over one's self or control over one's self samiji what do you mean by control over the self well what are we call self so body is a self for organs of perception organs of action are also self our mind also is self because we keep calling this thing our self in a secondary sense they are called self so self control means control over the mind control over the sense organs of action control over the sense organs of perception meaning that these fellows should do what i want them to do and not what they would they like to do very often the mind does what it likes to do i want to i say mind come on repeat om namah shivaya om namah shivaya and my mind may want to repeat a film song something like that you know it is your own agenda therefore we require very much the cooperation of the mind the mind should be under my control put it this way mind should be my friend lord krishna says atmeva hyatmano bandhu atmeva ripuratmana our mind can be our benefactor our mind can be our enemy so which mind is enemy the mind that is under control of the negative tendencies as we just talked about like kama krodha loha the mind which is under the control of lust anger desire etc so mind controlled by this negative tendencies is a mind as good as our enemy and the mind that is released from that control that mind will be under our control so atma vinigraha control of the self or control of the mind requires that we should make our mind free from these impulses of kama krodha loha <clears throat> lust anger grief 
Pratipaksha Bhavana. We already spoke about. When talking about, let us give you a little, a small, a little thing to remember. What is the Pratipaksha Bhavana? This story we were told in the past, I'll, I'll tell you again. The story described in the Bhrudharanika Upanishad. It says that once upon a time, this Devatas, Dhanavas, Manavas, Devata, Dhanava, Devata means gods, Dhanava means demons, Manava means humans. These three are the progeny of the Creator, it's called Prajapati. Prajapati means the Lord of the Praja, Lord of living beings. So, he has three progenies, Devata, Deva, Dhanava, Manava, the gods, demons and human beings. Once upon a time, all these three send their representatives to Prajapati to get some Upadesha or teaching from him. So they went to where the Prajapati lives and they lived there for a period of time, serving the teacher, living a life of austerity, penance, worship, Shraddha, service. So when you do that, live in that, then your mind becomes a little thinking, contemplative mind. So after some time, Prajapati invited them one by one. Prajapati first invited the Devatas, the gods. You know Devatas, they are supposed to be living in heaven. What is heaven? A place where all objects of pleasure are available. Heaven. When you are surrounded by objects of pleasure, then you are always tempted by them. There is always likely to be an indulgence when you are surrounded by the objects of pleasure. So these devatas are characterized by those who have a tendency to indulge in the pleasure. This tendency to indulge is called karma. When we use the word karma, it is not just a desire, but a binding desire, a craving. The unfortunate thing about the pleasure is that more you enjoy, more you want, more you need. So here the devatas represent those people who are suffering from karma or a craving for the objects of pleasure. So they go to Prajapati, Prajapati calls them, what do you want? Sir, we want from you an instruction which can be useful to us in our day-to-day -day life. Please tell us something which can be useful in our day-to-day -day life. Prajapati uttered one letter, the Ask them, did you understand, did you follow what I said? Yes sir, you said the. What does it mean? Dhamyata. Dham means have self-control. So when there is karma, which we all of us have in, you know, in, in varying degrees, a tendency to indulge when we cannot control ourselves. Swamiji, ice cream is my weakness. When that comes before me, I cannot control myself. So, I mean, certain that is my weakness. That particular show I have to watch. This thing I have to do. So, thus, there are many things that tempt us and control us when we cannot control ourselves. So, this tendency or this craving of the mind where we cannot control ourselves, that is called karma. So what do we do? Prajapati, the dhamyata, have dhamanam, have self-control. Meaning that you exercise a willpower and do not permit your mind to indulge. We know that I have some weaknesses. I am invited for dinner. I know good food will be there. My mouth is watering. 
and I am planning. I am looking forward to that. Then I tell my mind, and the plate is there in front of me. So many rasgullas are there. So many uh, dahi bras are there. So many this is there. All this is placed before me. So before I start eating food, I draw the boundaries. One dahi bra, two rasgulla, this much chapati, this much rice, this much this. I first draw all the boundaries and then I maintain those boundaries. Even though my mind says I want one more rasgulla, no. Let's go damanam. Let's go control yourself. Control your impulses. Draw the boundaries. Meaning that in order to slowly control our tendency to indulge, simple desire is not a problem. But the fulfillment of that desire, when it causes anger in me, when it causes unhappiness in me, then that desire is a problem. If there is a desire, you work for it. It's fulfilled. Okay. Not fulfilled. Okay. Then you can afford your desire, as our Swami says. But the fulfillment of a desire becomes a very important thing for you that otherwise you get frustrated, otherwise you get unhappy, you become sad. Then that is a binding desire. So we have to become free from this kind of things by drawing boundaries. That thus far and no further. This is called Dhamma. Dhamma means controlling the senses. The mind wants it. It wants one more as gulla. But when can desire be fulfilled? That can be fulfilled provided that desire is manifest as action. Now it is in my hand to perform. I may not be able to control that mind, but whether to allow that mind to express as an action or not is in my control. Therefore, I withdraw my hands. I keep my mouth closed. That's up to me. The mind says, I want to watch a movie. I said, no. Thus, put your foot down. Now, Swamiji, is it not suppressing the mind? It is not suppressing the mind if it is done willingly. We done wisely. I know that I have value for this control. And therefore I am doing it. In that case, it is not a suppression. It is called suppression when I do helplessly. I want to watch the movie and this my spouse doesn't let me watch. I want to eat the dust gulla. Sometimes I see. Because the wife keeps a check. I mean, wife keeps like a police. What the husband eats, and this fellow wants to eat as well as it snatches away. He says, No, doctor said, No, no, that is that poor fellow cannot. That's called suppression without a helplessness. But if you do not eat of your own choice, it is called self control. Understand that self control is always desirable. So, karma, how can you win over that? by self-control, by drawing boundaries and slowly narrowing the boundaries, you know, as the time goes. Next go the Dhanavas, the demons. Then Prajapati says, what do you want? Same request. Sir, give us some instruction which can be helpful in our day-to-day -day life. Again Prajapati said, the same letter. What do you understand? Dayadham, have, have mercy. Sir, you are right. Because we are very cruel. These demons are cruel people. All angry, anger and cruelty is their characteristic. Indulgence, the characteristic of devatas. Cruelty, anger and cruelty is the characteristic of the demons. So he said, Dayadham, have mercy. Have kindness, have compassion. Meaning that when anger arises, what should we do? Remind the man. Mercy, kindness, compassion. 
That fellow has done something to make me angry and I can retaliate, but I have value not to become angry. Therefore, at that time, I remind myself, I bring deliberately the attitude of kindness, mercy, compassion. That is to diffuse the anger. Then the manavas, the human beings go, they also are told, the what does it mean? Datta. Hey, you give. Because these human beings are very greedy people. Kama, Krodha and Loba. Loba means greed. What is greed? Not being satisfied with what you have. And inability to part with what you have. Not satisfied with what I have. I want more and more. And secondly, Inability to part with what I have. Even if there is somebody who is more needy than I am, I cannot part with what I have. I feel very insecure. This is called greed. So Prajapati is the datta. You give charity. So Kama, Krodha, Loha. The, the, the. The, the, so the first is Dhamyata, Dhamma. Second is Daya. Third is Dhanam. Dhamma, Daya, Dhanam. Dhamma, the control of self. Daya, mercy or compassion. And Dhanam is charity. Or you can remember one English letter C. Either one Sanskrit letter, the or once in English let us see. C for control, for karma. C for compassion, for krodha. C for charity, for loha. Atma vinigraha. And thus, by constantly with this pratipaksha bhavana, I keep on diffusing those impulses. And thus, make my mind free from impulsive behavior. Two kinds of problems we have. Sometimes we act out of impulse, then also the mind is not in our control. Sometimes we act in a mechanical manner. We don't even know what is happening. What is mechanical? Things happen by themselves. Every day we brush the teeth. So my, I am brushing the teeth, my hand is working, my mind is somewhere else. Lack of mindfulness is called mechanicalness. I take shower, shower gets finished, even eating food, it gets finished and we don't know. Because mind is preoccupied with something else. So when the mind is thus, this is called mechanical, yantrikata, mechanicalness. So there is another thing, another problem that we have and that requires alertness, savadhani, alertness. Be alert in what you do. Be mindful in what you do. So mindfulness in our activities. When you are eating, just eat. Talking, then talk. Bathing, then bathe. Walking, then walk. Meaning that the mind should be where the body is. Body should be where the action is. So when they teach this dancing, Bharatanatyam for example. Yato hasta tato drishtihi. Yato drishtihi tato Manaha, yato manaha, tato bhava. So where the hand is, there the sight is. Where the sight is, there the mind is. Where the mind is, there the right bhava or attitude is. <clears throat> so thus, a deliberate practice of mindfulness. That is so. Impulsiveness is controlled by this pratipaksha bhavana. And mechanicalness is controlled by mindfulness. And that's how Atma Vinigraha, Vinigraha control of the self. A very important thing. 
because your mind is not with myself how can i study even while when we are listening it's quite likely that our mind may you know take off somewhere either because you are concerned about uh, you know when this lecture will be over and when i will leave so that i will really have to make another appointment or do something else I have to catch a train. I have to catch a bus. I have to catch this. So mind is thinking about what is to be done now, next. Or when we talk about something, jealousy, immediately mind thinks of some person and starts thinking about that. Meaning that mind takes off very often. It is not where our body is, and so. So listening to scriptures, studying, contemplation—all of this requires a mind which is together with us. A mindfulness is required. Chittai ka agrata, chitta na ishalyam. The single pointedness of the mind is a very important quality which we have to cultivate. <clears throat> you completed one verse. Let us read the second verse. इंद्रियाथु वैराग्यम अनहंकार जन्म मृत्युजरा व्याधि दुखदोषादर्शन इंद्रियाथु वैराग्यम वैराग्यम डिस्पैशन इंद्रियाथु विथ रेफरेंस टू सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स सी द ट्रांसलेशन इंद्रिय मींस सेंस ऑर्गन अर्थ मींस ऑब्जेक्ट इंद्रियाथ मींस द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ सेंस ऑर्गन वी हैव फाइव ऑर्गन्स ऑफ परसेप्शन द फैकल्टी ऑफ हियरिंग faculty of touch faculty of sight faculty of taste faculty of smell and there are corresponding objects shabda the sound with reference to the faculty of hearing sparsha touch with reference to the faculty of touch rupa the color or the form faculty of seeing rasa taste for the faculty of taste Gandha smell for the ghrana indriya the faculty of smell. So five organs of perception, five corresponding objects, and our relationship generally with these objects is one of attachment or aversion. We love something or hate something. That's our relationship. Katopani just says. परांजिखाने वितरणत स्वयं भू तस्मात परांग पश्चिदे नांतरात्मन। The Creator has made our mind and sense organs extrovert. Therefore, they always look out; they never look at the self. Meaning that there is a natural fascination for the objects of pleasure. because the mind wants happiness mind wants gratification and whatever the mind considers as a means of gratification there is naturally a liking for what i look upon as a source of gratification so anything that pleases my mind becomes an object of my liking because basically what i want is pleasure happiness so whatever i look upon as a source of happiness becomes an object of my like but the same token whatever i look upon as an obstacle to that pleasure or look upon as a source of unhappiness that becomes an object of dislike so like and dislike or attachment and aversion in sanskrit raga and dvesha 
So if we observe our mind, that we have this, our relationship with everything essentially is characterized by raga and dvesha. Either I love something or I hate something. And I am indifferent to many other things of course. But what I am indifferent to today can become an object of like or dislike tomorrow under given conditions. So usually our relationship with the people, with the things, with beings is one of raga and dvesha, like and dislike. So what's wrong with that? Wrong is that both this Raga and Dvesha, they control my mind. What is Raga? Attachment. What is attachment? I cannot do without something. When that is an object of my happiness or security, since happiness and security are important to me, therefore that object which in my opinion gives me happiness or security becomes very important. Therefore, the presence of that object, the possession of that object, the experience of that object becomes very important to me. By the same token, whatever I look upon as a source of unhappiness or sorrow becomes an object of dislike because I do not want sorrow, I do not want unhappiness. Therefore, I do not want that which I think will create sorrow or unhappiness. So this is how my relationship is. It is characterized by Raga and Dvesha, attachment and aversion. What is Vairagya? Vairagya is Vairagya. Viragasya Bhavaha Vairagyam. The state of Viraga is called Vairagya. What is Viraga? Vigataha Ragaha Yasmatsaha Viraga. That's why Raga has gone away. Meaning freedom of Raga is called Vairagya. And Raga and Dvesha are like two sides of a coin. Where Raga is there, Dvesha also is there. Therefore, freedom from Raga and Dvesha is called Vairagya. Meaning that my relationship with the objects and things and beings of the world should be one which is free from Raga and Dvesha. I look upon you not either with attachment nor with aversion. That is a healthy relationship. That state of mind is called Vairagya. And that is a very valuable thing. We will continue our discussion tomorrow evening. <clears throat> Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyade Purnasya Purnamada Purnameva Vashishyade Om Shanti 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 Hari O Shri Guru Pyonama Hari O We'll request five minutes of your time. Our Yaya Kapoor, you would like to say something for a few minutes. Please listen to him.